um, I'm turning a piece of O1 tool, tool steel here to make a reamer for the cylinder. This sort of reamer works very similar to a stepped drill bit, where you have a drill bit that's one size and then it moves up to the next size and moves up to the next size. It functions in kind of a similar manner. You can't see it in the screenshot, but I'm using a dead center instead of a live center. Uh, a dead center doesn't move and it takes the bearings out of the equation for when you're machining, so it's generally more accurate. big disadvantage to using it is you have to oil it constantly and you might actually see me picking up the oil can occasionally and squirting it on the end of it. The is made a little bit oversized and I polish it to its final dimension. part was then parted off. The part is put into a rotary table with a tailstock. The cutter is actually a couple thou past dead center. This will make sure that the rake is a positive angle. This could have been done just as easily with an end mill. Just the dovetail cutter happens to be sharper than most of my end mills right now. After each cut, the rotary table is moved 60 degrees. As far as sharpening it is concerned, all I did was leave it the exact way the end mill left it and took a flat file and cleaned up all the edges and deburred it.
partisan heat treated. Again, I leave it glass hard because I seem to have better results that way. Someone suggested putting the cutter in the middle like this to heat treat it because it'll do it evenly without warping. Well, it did heat pretty evenly. I did end up lighting the oil on fire and burning my hand and burning the mill. There is actually oil that is made specifically for quenching that won't light on fire like that, but I'm too cheap to buy it. To be honest, this is the first time I've ever had the oil catch on fire. I'm guessing it's because when I put the part in, it vaporized the oil and the torch was sitting right next to it and probably ignited it. The reamer is centered in the hole, and I start to ream the hole out. The machine is turned on extremely low, it's on its lowest setting, and you use a lot of oil and go down very slowly. I'm actually using a cartridge as a go, no-go gauge. As soon as I get the right depth, I'll set the machine and then that'll be the set depth for the rest of the holes. Next I need to make clearance for the little rim on the cartridge. I use the same cutter that I used to, to cut the slots out into the side of the cylinder for the bolt. It just happened to be the exact right size so I didn't have to make another cutter. To measure all I did was put the head of the cutter flat against the cylinder and moved over far enough until there was clearance enough for the shell to fit in there and then I just set my DRO and did that for the rest of them. The finish came out really good. Something I've almost forgot to mention, um, when you're making your reamer, you want it a little bigger at the back and a little smaller at the front, so it's just a slight taper. So it's actually kind of cone-shaped. The reason for this is when the shell expands, if it's if it doesn't have that slight taper, the shell will expand inside the metal and you won't be able to pull it out. So you want, to, you want it bigger at the back and smaller towards the front. This is the reason that many cartridges are tapered. On a square walled cartridge like this, the, the taper is very, very slight. It's only about a half a thou from front to back. And now moving on to the barrel drilling. This little box I'm working on is the chip box. It will hold all the chips and oil from splashing all over the place. I stole the little block that I'm attaching to it from my rifling attachment. I won't ever be using either one of them at the same time, so I figured this will keep me from having to make another part. 
The block is what holds the, the box down. It holds onto the bed of the lay, and that's what you use to clamp it with. These holes here are for the oil to drain out. The hole I'm drilling here is for the access for the barrel to go into the box. And this one is for the gun drill. The barrel stock is put all the way through the spindle, and it's indicated on the back and the front. The spider bolts are basically used like a four-jaw chuck. I indicate the front and the back several times, because every time you make a change on the front or the back, the corresponding one will change also. Eventually, they will both read zero. A center drill is used, and then a drill, and then a ring. The hole is only a half an inch deep. The gun drill requires some sort of a starter hole. I could have made a bushing that fit over the end of it with the same size hole going through it, or can start it like this. Either way, it doesn't really matter. You might notice that the bar stock is hanging out quite a ways from the chuck. There's actually a reason for this. The way the bed is made, I won't be able to bolt down the chip pan any closer than where it's at. There won't be any force coming from the side while I'm drilling, so this shouldn't make too much difference. In order to line up the gun drill, I turn the outside of the barrel down to about three quarters of an inch. The inside of the gun drill holder is a one inch bore with a three quarter inch sleeve. Since I'm turning this piece of steel and not removing it, it should be exactly on spindle center. I then slide the inside sleeve and the holder over the piece of steel. I then slide the inside sleeve and the holder over the piece of steel, while all the parts to the cross slide are still loose. This lines up all the parts, and then they are tightened down. Then the gun drill is inserted into the holder. with everything in place. The pressure line comes in through the back and feeds oil through the end of the gun drill. The red handle is a needle valve. 
When opened, it will let some pressure out of the system and the oil goes back to the tank. This is how you control the pressure level. I used a few pieces of rubber to keep the oil from being able to come through the hole where the gun drill comes in. The box has a door to keep the oil inside. Shortly I figure out that I don't need it, and I'll explain why. The pump I used is actually made for a pressure washer, and it gets up to 1600 PSI. You can hear it running. That isn't the lathe, that's actually a pressure washer. It's really loud. The pressure washer had a, a nozzle that had a really small hole in it. The gun drill has two close to 8th inch holes in front of it, so there's a, a lot more volume coming through, and so there's not enough pressure building up. Luckily, this didn't turn out to be a problem. The barrel is so short that it doesn't need a whole lot of pressure to get the chips out. Here you can see the oil draining out of the holes mentioned earlier. The lathe's speed rate is set at its lowest setting and it's at 2600 RPM. In a moment, I actually open the box while it's running because I realize it doesn't seem to have enough pressure. From the research I did, if you're doing a rifle barrel, it actually has an extra step. You have to pull a ream through it. When doing a pistol barrel, the pistol barrel is so short that the gun drill is more than adequate, apparently. I'm definitely not an expert barrel maker, or an expert gunsmith, so I, I could be wrong, but that's what I read, so that's what I'm doing. You can see the chips coming out, but they do seem to get stuck when they hit the rubber pad. If left alone, they actually do clear themselves, but I tried to help them out a little bit. The hole is drilled to 11.30 seconds. This leaves about a thou and a half. Each rifling groove is a half thou, and then there's a half thou left over for polishing. I made an area in the chip hand that's sealed off so the oil just won't run out and onto the floor. This is a pressure washer pump my dad actually gave to me. It is gravity fed from a 5 gallon bucket. I used a PVC drain that I found at the hardware store. Another advantage to this is I can use it for a flood cooling system, and it's actually cutting oil so I don't have to stand there with the bottle constantly. I do believe, however, that I will have to change the pump. This pump seemed to work okay for the short barrel, but I noticed the further the gun drill went into the barrel, the harder it was for the chips to come out. I plan on drilling rifle barrels eventually, so I know I'm going to have to get a pump with some more volume. I came to the conclusion there wasn't enough pressure to worry about, so I took the chip box off for now. Without having that 90 degree turn, the chips came out really easy. I made the chip box out of a grooming box that my mother-in-law gave me that she used to use for her dogs. She thought I could use it. I used the front half and the lid. You can see it sitting up there on the, the windowsill. I'm going to keep the chip box for later. I figure if I get a higher power pump, I'm probably going to need it. After the hole is drilled, I cut the piece off of the bar. You always want the bar to be a little longer than what you're drilling, so that oil doesn't spray out the end when the drill comes out the other side. This is the back side of the barrel. Notice how centered it is. If you tried this with a twist drill, it would definitely be off-center. This hole will also be off-center even though it's not detectable by the human eye. The next process will be to turn it between centers so I can center both sides up evenly. The finish inside is amazing. It's a perfect mirror finish. It's really hard to catch it on camera though. This process was way easier than I expected it to be. That's all there is for this week. Please like, subscribe, and comment.